Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium, and today is part two of our series where we answer your political questions. And I mean we, I mean me, Susan, but also my spirit guide team that is specifically here to help me with these political questions. What I'm going to be doing today is reading the energy of the individuals you ask about, but I'm also going to be getting input from my spirit guides in real time because I'm a channel and I'm channeling today 60% my spirit guides, 40% Susan, mixing it all up and we'll see what comes out of my mouth because <laughs> you never know. All right, let's get started. Uh, here's the questions you guys have asked and hopefully we'll give you guys some answers that'll clarify it or give you some food for thought. Who knows? Revel, Revel 59 says, there's more news about Clarence Thomas and apparently his assistant getting Venmo payments. You guys know what Venmo is? It's, well, you can send money right through your phone. That easy. Venmo payments from lawyers with cases coming up in front of Thomas's court, the Supreme Court. So on the surface, right? Are these attorneys sending Venmo payments to Thomas's assistant because Thomas's assistant did what in return for these payments? And what's interesting about this, the guides are reminding me, and I don't do a lot of Venmo stuff, but Venmo is interesting because some of it can be public. Uh, I, I hope, I doubt that this is public, but who knows? These people live in such a glass ivory tower that they think they're untouchable, that they probably did it in public and thought, what are you going to do? You know, you, you can't do anything. I'm Clarence Thomas. I'm a Supreme Court justice and I serve for life. So bugger off, right? Uh, well, that's not really the case because these people are starting and, and the guides are showing me uh, that uh, I don't know if they're using two different words at once. Cases and laws. Cases are starting to stack up. So it would be one thing, perhaps, if there was just one discrepancy or two discrepancies. And when I'm talking about discrepancies, I'm talking about real discrepancies where, you know, Harlan Crow bought. Thomas's mother's house and Thomas's mother still lives there and even uh, renovated it for her while she's living there. I mean, there. how about all the vacations that Thomas took where he was on these mega yachts? And what about all of these uh, private jets that flew Thomas around? That's just the beginning of, of these investigations. So that's what the guides want to say is they're starting to stack up, right? More and more, um, what did they call them? Oh, I'm going to call them irregularities. I don't know what they just, discrepancies are going to be added to the pile. And what the guides want to say is, is that even though there should not be two justices, right? There shouldn't be a, a, a justice level for Supreme Court justices and a justice level for everybody else, right? The truth is there is. There are two completely different justice systems in our country. It's sad, but it is true. Ask anybody who's brown or any other color than white. They'll tell you about it. But what the guides want to say is, is that th these are laws. Some of these things are real laws that have been broken. The guides want to show me like it matters. Again, I guess what they're trying to say to me and to you is that there's a thing in law called intent, right? So yes, I killed this person, but my intent was not to kill them. My intent was self-defense or my intent was to just rough them up. My intent was not cold-blooded murder. So in this case, the guides are saying if you consider a law like a line, um, in this case, some of these, and we'll, we'll talk about Thomas, but I'll say some of these Supreme Court justices have sort of tripped over the line. Oh, oops, I didn't realize. My bad, right? I mean, that's that's like, again, that doesn't really get it in, in the real world. Oops, I ran that red light. 
oh, my bad, I'll do better next time, right? I don't think that's going to go over with the trooper or the police officer. Right? I don't think that's really going to play. But that seems to be the energy that some of these SCOTUS uh, judges are using is, oh, I wasn't aware. I didn't know. I mean, if you're a Supreme Court justice and you don't know what the laws are, that should be grounds right there for you to have to step down. But as we know, they have this hubris that just is beyond anybody's you know, imagination. So the answer to your question is, is that I, I feel that this is a DOJ thing. I feel that, and I've told you guys that Thomas is going to step down. I've told you guys this. I don't know the timing of it. I do believe it's going to happen. I believe it today even more than ever before. And I believe how this is going to happen in the last video, part one, I told you guys, think back to a time in your life when you, you think, I cannot believe that happened. I just cannot believe that happened. Now, use that same energy to this. Kennedy stepped down. We don't know why, right? Uh, you know, Tucker Carlson was removed. Things happen that are surprising, that are shocking. This can happen. This is the energy here with Thomas. What I see happening is, is that, well, unfortunately, it's more um, scoff law. They use this word a lot where, when they scoff at the law, scuff law. I'm scoffing at that law. It doesn't apply to me. Well, what I see is the DOJ kind of sneaking something, you know, like how you ever seen in a movie where they take a paper and they turn it upside down and they slide it on the table towards the person like, here's my best and final offer, right? And you flip it up and look at it and you're like, yay or nay, right? This is what I see the DOJ doing to Thomas. They slide the paper to Thomas like, we're not going to make this public. The paper's upside down. It's for your eyes only. Sliding it across the table to you for you to take a look at and decide what you want to do. Thomas, arrogantly, he doesn't peek at it. He picks it up, brandishes it, looks at it, scrutinizes it, lowers his glasses, raises glasses, screams for Jenny. Sadly, Jenny reads it because I'm not sure he has, you know, to be able to understand what it says. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Jenny starts screaming and tears it up and says, we're never going to do this. They can't make us. And meanwhile, Thomas is like, do what? I don't even understand what's happening. I swear to God, this is the scene they're showing me. Well, the scene is, is that the DOJ is saying, we have enough evidence to put you in jail. Scratch that prison. We have enough evidence to put you in prison. And we're sort of in this kind of real you know, don't mess with me mood right now, where we're kind of really in this place where we're happy to make them, to use you as an example. Would you like to be our example? Because if you would like to be our example, just continue sitting on that court. But because you're a Supreme Court justice and nobody wants egg on their face, the United States doesn't want egg on their face. We would prefer if this was a private matter. So step down, post haste. That's how I see it happening. And this is the first time I've ever seen that. I've never, they've never shown me this scenario because I think we are here. X marks the spot. We are here where now they have it. You know, the guides have told you, and this is not, something that got this is fact in our 3d earth land as well as fact in what the guides are saying the doj doesn't take somebody to court they don't indict you unless they are 98 percent sure of a win like 98 percent sure of a win so if they're 95 percent they're not they're gonna let you go sad but true if they're 80 percent 90 percent they're gonna let you go 98 percent yeah, we got us a ball game. So if they bring an indictment against you, your goose is cooked. You're it's over. You got 2% to get out of this, right? So Jenny knows this and Jenny will make some phone calls. There's some women's group that she makes a phone call to. It's almost similar to the Daughters of the Republic. If you're in the South, you might know that, but it's some uh, women's group. I don't know what women's group it is, but it's some 
group that she calls that has uh, access to uh, it's it's a way it's a way for her to get legal advice that she trusts on the down low right also she doesn't have to pay for it oh my god she doesn't have to pay for it i didn't know she was that tight squeaky tight she's tight she doesn't even want to pay for legal advice also because she doesn't trust lawyers she doesn't trust lawyers she because really right now trump trump's attorney client seal of uh you know that seal where the client can tell the attorney anything has been punctured now trump's attorneys have to get on the witness stand and give testimony now how that gets punctured in my understanding is is that the attorney stays your attorney while you're criming while you're actively committing a crime so you can go to your attorney and say yeah i killed her five years ago or i killed him five years ago or even last year but i haven't killed anybody in the last you know six months or whatever so that's past tense the attorney can then know about it and represent you but if you're criming present tense and your attorney knows that you're criming present tense, I think that makes them an accessory. Therefore, the privilege between the client and the attorney, privilege to not have to um, you know, be a witness against their own client is punctured. And so she doesn't trust. Now, you guys, I feel sometimes with the guides, like I'm a cow <laughs> and I'm being led down the garden path and I'm just munching grass the whole way, which is like the information I'm telling you. And I'm like, wow, this is good grass. This is good grass. And then when I get to the place where they want me to see, I'm like, oh, damn, right? So the you guys probably already got there, but I'm still the cow munching the grass. If she's worried about the attorney client privilege being punctured, so to speak. And that's why she won't hire an attorney. What does that mean, you guys? Say it with me. She's still criming. She's still criming. That's the only reason why you wouldn't hire an attorney, because you're still doing it. Big dummies. For entertainment purposes only. So. Anyway, that's what I see happening with Thomas. Uh, he gets a, um, what is the, the guys just said it and I missed it. Um, he gets an offer that's too good to refuse. They're going to make him an offer that's too good to refuse, which means, yeah, Jenny, you can tear up uh, the evidence because you're going to step down. Your husband is going to step down. If you don't, if he doesn't step down, then we've got extra copies. You think that's the only one we got? So yeah. So that that this is the newest thing that I got. I I haven't gotten this information before. We'll see what happens. I see him stepping down. I see a lot of things happening. I can't explain why it's going to happen. Like I'll tell you something else. The guides have been bugging me about at two o'clock in the morning. That is not acceptable. I might say. But guess what? You know the guides told me a while back that one of you guys asked this question, obviously, that MTG wasn't going to go down first, that Lauren Bobert was going to go down first. And I've always scratched my head about that. Like how, why, why, why? You know, I, I just want to ask, just wanna ask why a thousand times. And I still don't have an answer, but another, another thing fell into place and the guides directed my attention to it which means, Susan, this is an important little factoid for you to put in your little Virgo factoid mind. And that is that MTG got thrown out of the Freedom Caucus. You probably know this. MTG, Marjorie Taylor Greene, was evicted from the Freedom Caucus. And the fact that the guides drew my attention to that makes me think, potentially, allegedly, that the Freedom Caucus people might do something that gets them all in a bunch of hot water. And by virtue of MTG calling Bobert a, a B name that's, that rhymes with witch, 
And then admitting she did it to the press <laughs> and getting thrown out of the Freedom Caucus might actually save her patukas. Right? In a, in a weird way, like in a just the way the chips fell, right? Kind of thing. So watch that space. Watch the Freedom Caucus. Watch her because I feel like they're going to go down. And I do think she's going to go down, but I think it's separate. And I think this rending of her from them has some, in some ways sealed her fate in this way. So I, that to me is connected to what I just talked about. But because I'm channeling, I don't really know if it's connected to what I just talked about. If it's not, it's just an interesting factoid. Revel also asked about Texas to see when we were going to get rain in Texas. She has a best friend in Austin who says the ground is so dry. It's fissuring. Um, listen, Texas, I don't see, I, it's bad. I, I didn't know that until you asked the question and um, it's bad. It, the, the drought is bad in Texas. I see livestock. I see foundations and housing having problems. I see something to do with the electric wires that they're hot or they fizzle or it's just uh, maybe it's the heat, right? That causes that electric wires to short out. It's bad. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And I think that the rain that's coming to Texas is going to be monsoon-like or hurricane-like or just too much rain uh, for it to really do it much good. It'll just run off instead of being a nice penetrating slow rain. I wish I could give you better advice or better better vision of that, but that's what I that's what I see there. Um, it's like Florida in my in my in part one. I told you guys about Florida. If you're in Texas. You got to just prepare. I mean, it's it's not. It's I hate to say this, but the guides just said it's really too late to uh, affect the weather patterns. At this time, we are now in a position that we have to. Adjust ourselves. To deal with the extreme weather. OK, so. Adjust yourselves wherever you live, because this is the whole United States. Parts of the United States are going to have drought. Parts of you guys are going to have significant snowfall or ice. Uh, we're just going to have very bizarre weather patterns. Um, and we just are going to have to adapt. Humans are going to have to adapt. So that's what I would say to that. Okay, thank you for your question. Soul Shine says, will Governor Kemp in Georgia be the Republican nominee? You guys, it's really interesting because when I look at the Republican nominee, so when I look at, I fast forward all of us into say June or July of next year, when did they do the nominee? In May, probably in the spring? No, I, I right now in July of 2023, so like six months before the nominee, a lot can happen. But I Kemp has problems. I, I don't know. I just hear he has problems. Um, he has his own problems is what the guides are saying to me. He has his own problems. Uh, something about housekeeping. Uh, so I would assume that means Georgia... Right. Uh, right. So also, I would just say to you guys that the spirit guides said a while back, and they've been bringing this back to my consciousness as well, that Atlanta would be ground zero. I Some of you guys remember this, and this is the thing, right? Like, what does it mean? It's a lot like the death card in the tarot. It doesn't necessarily mean somebody's going to die. You have to read energy a little differently. It's not so cut and dry. So ground zero could mean that it's the place that blows up the Republican Party. Atlanta, Fonnie Willis could be ground zero for the end of the Republican Party as we know it. Okay. So when I look at Kemp, I feel like George, he's got Georgia problems. He's got Georgia on my mind. His party is under attack or in shambles. 
a lot of the local Georgian politics will be exposed. It's uh, he's got problems. I, that's what I get with Kemp. I and and when I go into who's going to be the Republican nominee, I can't tell you guys because I see mayhem. Mayhem. I I just see infighting and lots of people in the field and just a fracas, a fracas, chaos. I don't know who's going to, it's like a scrum and then somebody gets spit out of it. And I don't know who that is going to be. I don't know who's going to get spit out of that scrum, Uh, but they're not, they're going to be way worse to wear. I'll tell you that after that, after that crazy scrum of Republicans all biting each other and fighting each other. Uh, Interesting information though. Thank you for that question. Okay, Kristen, Christine uh, says, once the Florida and Texas GOP governors are out, will stability return to the states? Let's be specific. Once DeSantis and Abbott are out, because you might have another GOP governor follow them. So that screws up my questioning. Once DeSantis and Abbott are out, okay, all right, out, out, I can't. I can't put Texas and Florida together in this question. I have to separate them. So let me separate them. Once DeSantis is out of Florida, wow, lots of cleanup, lots of uh, corruption, uh, a lot of uh, exposed corruption. Uh, There's this sense like a lot of, uh, or I don't know what a lot is, but some Florida buildings, high rises are, are falling or they're being deemed um, inhabitable or uh, whatever, unsafe, uh, that's the same energy of your foundation is not secure. Your foundation is not safe. This is Florida. The foundation is not safe. There's something to do with Florida's drinking water. Apparently, this is going to be a big deal. And I'm not talking about a county. I'm not talking about a city. I'm talking about the state of Florida's drinking water really big problems coming with that if not already if that isn't already happening so this new governor is is just unfortunately like um an, a target remember i don't know if this was in part 1 or part 2 but remember somebody asked me about yunkin running for president and yunkin was like what and take over this mess are you crazy why would i take over this you know wrecked country right? I'm going to wait until somebody fixes it and then I'll run. So this is the problem with gut with Florida, right? Whoever takes over the governorship of Florida just has so much to do. And the people are so mad that it's going to take a long time. There's a lot of environmental stressors. The guides are using the words environmental stressors on Florida. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure. Again, that's the foundation, right? There's a lot of infrastructure problems with roads, with sewers. Apparently, infrastructure has not been cared for. It hasn't been um, kept up to speed. Um, and all, and and there's going to be this uh, discovery, potentially, allegedly, that uh, monies that were given, maybe it's federal monies that were given to Florida to redo sewers or re- to redo infrastructure has been usurped or has not been used in, in a prudent manner. Maybe it's not criminal, but it certainly wasn't a wise use of that money. Uh, so all of that's going down for Florida. And I've always told you guys, and I, I love Florida, but I've always told you guys, Florida is dark. The state, the energy is dark. It's it's one of the darkest states. I don't know why, right? You might think uh, some other state like Texas would be super dark, but for whatever reason, Florida, you guys are really going through some shite. Um, now I do, what I, what I will say in the future about Florida is that I do see this, um, this might be 10 years or even 15 years out, but I do see this European um, infrastructure, European, I'm just going to call it infrastructure because I feel like Florida is sinking or the waves are coming up or something's happening there. And I feel like um, there's going to need to be engineering that's going to be very, very cutting edge. Uh, also very 
environmentally savvy, environmentally sound. Um, that's coming, but you're you're looking at 10 to 15 years, Florida, for that. Now, I think once DeSantis is gone, whoever steps in is just going to get pummeled. I just see them getting pummeled, pummeled, pummeled by their citizens, pummeled by terrible, uh, like crisis, like one cry, like, but this is from the discovery of all of the bad things that have been swept under the rug. Now, of course, people aren't blaming Republicans. They're just going to blame DeSantis. So they're going to blame Christ or whoever they're going to blame. Um, and maybe Christ will, will take the governorship again. Uh, he's pretty good at getting pummeled and, and staying upright. So, and then as far as Texas goes, I think te for whatever reason, Texas is in a little bit better position than Florida. I do think that Texas could um, get its act together quick, more quickly. It, it's not, it doesn't have quite the same level of um, corrupt, but also because Florida is a beautiful place. I mean, there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of Russian mob money there. It, it's, it's, Texas is a big state and it doesn't have the tourist. It, it has more of a working, you know, it just doesn't have um, the opportunity for so much corruption that Florida does, right? Because Florida is such a beautiful place to live. Of course, the money flew in. It just, in it, in it, in it, cor it was corruption. The stability is going to return to the states. It really is. In the end result, I really feel like Florida is going to come out ahead. To be honest with you, maybe because they're they fall apart so much that that the rot is really seen, really accounted for, and Texas kind of keeps its rot kind of hidden more. So hopefully that makes some sense. I don't know. Um, thank you for your question, Ruthie H says. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. That's great, Ruthie H. Um, her question is about Joe Biden. He's looking somewhat fragile lately, and his speech has been slightly jumbled at times. I know he's 80, but will his health hold out long enough for him to win in 24? I sure hope so. We do need him. Well, you know, he has, you know, he stutters. Um, I, I've talked about this once. Um, let me add, let me just be very certain about what I want to disclose and what I don't want to disclose. Right. He's fine. Biden is fine. Uh, he's certainly in better shape than Trump. Um, he is a uh, very transparent about his health. He gets regular health checkups. Uh, so I think he's going to be fine. I think he's got more moxie. He's got more energy um, in him than uh, we think. Um, he's got a steely reserve, a steely resolve, resolve is the word they want to use. So your question is, will he, will he last until 24? I mean, I, y'all that have watched me a long time know that I have seen Biden stepping down. The guides told me this when he first got elected, that he would step down midterm, uh, and that Kamala Harris would become president. And that is written. That seems to be some kind of contractual thing, just like Biden was, it was his contract to be president at this time. This is why he didn't win those times that he ran. This is his moment. This was predetermined. Okay. Now, um, I'm about 95% right now sure that Kamala Harris is going to be president because it is also predetermined for her to be president. And it's also not predetermined for her to run for president. I don't think she's going to run for president. I think she's going to step in and Biden is going to step down. Uh, I do not see him being unalived. I do not see him being hurt any way. I just see him getting a diagnosis and saying, whereas I could lead and govern, I'm going to step down because I'm going to be dealing with this. I don't think it's cancer. I think it's some other kind of diagnosis. Now, having said all that, I think that it is absolutely his resolve, his determination to win in 24 and to be a second term president. I also think that it's going to happen. I think narrowly, but I think it's going to happen. And perhaps because uh, the Republican Party is in disarray. 
that it happens. Now, I'm not saying that because they're a challenge to him. I'm saying that because they're so, na- the guides want to say they're navel gazing, which is a funny term, navel gazing, meaning looking at your own self instead of noticing what's going on in the world, right? So they may miss some things about Biden that they may challenge. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to last to 24. I have my doubts. I think I've been public about them. I had my doubts that he was going to last until the election. And I, I, I'm not 100% that he's going to last until the election, but I think that I'm about 80% that he's going to last to the election. Um, and I would just say that whatever you think of Kamala Harris doesn't matter. <laughs> Your opinion of her does not matter because she's going to be president whether you like it or not. Um and she's going to be president for a reason. She's going to be a president because she's going to be called the law and order president. That is what she's going to be called. She's going to govern during a time when we need law and order. So you might surmise from that, that we're going to be having some civil unrest. Um, now, you know, we'll see if that timeline tracks. I feel like it is. But I think the more, uh, this is a caveat, the more that Biden does, Biden is overachieving, right? So whatever, whatever the timeline suggested that Biden would achieve, given this extremely difficult environment to achieve anything, he's overachieved. He's done more than the timeline suggested he would do. The more he does in this timeline, the less we need Kamala Harris to be the law and order president. So if he continues to overachieve um, and the Republicans continue to help us by being, you know, jackasses that they are, perhaps we won't need her to fulfill that role. That's, That's how I see it. That is how I see it. If we need that president, she's it. If she becomes president, you know what's on the table for dinner. Okay. Does that make sense? Whew. All right. Couple more questions because this energy is about to like shoot me out of my seat. Okay, great. Somehow my mouse moved and I didn't even see it. Okay. Uh, Sewing Light 1960 says Johnson and Johnson recently said they want to invoke a secondary patent on their TB tuberculosis drug, stopping others from producing a generic version. A generic version would save thousands of lives, probably tens of thousands of lives, many in West Africa who cannot afford the patented version. J&J has enjoyed 20 years of exclusivity on a drug that was developed with mostly public funds, which makes me so mad. Anyway, will they cave to the public outcry and let a generic be produced um, or not? I I think that they're going to cave because Johnson, and I don't think it's to public outcry per se, because I don't think they care about public outcry. They may do something like this. Um, so in this way, I feel like Johnson and Johnson is going to get the message. And I feel like they're either A, going to offer some of these um, countries and whoever some sort of grant to get their to get this TB medication at a very reduced rate or they're going to be forced to do it. So either way, they're forced to play ball. One scenario, they get to keep the profit, they they get to keep the patent and the profit where being the big good-hearted corporation by giving these impoverished countries a drug that that the United States citizens paid for anyway. Um, or the other way is we, we make them do it. So either way, I feel like, yes, they're going to do it. It's just a matter of whether they will. And it, it's the same energy, right, around these movie moguls, right? It's the same energy of this greedy, of this mine, 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 never saying... I've been blessed with incredible profits. Thank you. I'm going to tithe back to the people now. They're going to learn their lesson. This is the lesson on the table right now for 
humans on planet earth is us versus them, the people versus these entities, these governments or these corporations or whatever it is. The people are going to win because that is the era we're going into. And they just, they can't believe it because they've been in charge high and mighty for so many millennia that now they're they're having to be more balanced. And it's just taking them a long time to get the memo, to be honest, to believe it. Okay. Katie Girl says, oh God, not a DeJoy question. I I I I get a big fat F on DeJoy. I can't read DeJoy. Um him and McConnell are my nemesis. Uh I I I'll try again. I'll try again. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to try to learn from my mistakes and do it differently. I'm going to go into DeJoy's energy. I'm going to suit up in a hazmat, energetic hazmat suit with full oxygen, because I'm telling you, it doesn't smell good either. I'm going to go into DeJoy's energy. If I don't come back, send, send help. Um, he wants out. Okay. He's ready. He's ready to start. He's ready to, he's looking away. Uh, from the United States Post Office, he's looking to war. He can make more money. He's looking towards an outside entity, an outside corporation, an outside business. Um, could be that he's having some international, some kind of international ability. Oh, okay, yeah, some in- international shipping. Uh, internet. Um, there's a new. There's a country that's coming on online, quote unquote. Um, meaning that they're becoming more Western or more uh, marketplace driven. And, and he could make a lot of money there. Like he really wants to go there because he could be the person who creates the shipping or, or the um, it's all, not only about shipping. It's about what is that when you uh, tra- all the whole transportation thing, right? The roads, the, the whole thing, he could be like the transportation czar, um, but not in a government role in a, in a, I'm going to fleece your country sort of role, right? Potentially. And he can't do it. He can't do this while he's on the board. It, it would definitely be a, a conflict. So I feel like he may remove himself. I'm hearing him say the writing is on the wall. They're, they're making the right moves to get rid of him. And also, interestingly enough, didn't DeJoy, didn't DeJoy have stake or ownership or something in FedEx or UPS or one of these United States shipping companies, which why Fox in the Hen House, hello, the United States Postal Service, let's put somebody from private sector in there and let's have them gut it so that the U.S. Post Office system is broken. And now all these other companies can make money. What happened was Amazon upset his apple cart. Here comes Amazon. Amazon has their own shipping services. They don't need FedEx. They don't need UPS. They don't need the post office. So now his, what, what he was doing within the post office, the um, machinations, the, his goals have changed. Like the whole system has changed. Like, it's almost like he's saying to me, I bet on horse number five and horse number eight is now beating horse number five. I need to cut my losses and get out of here. Right. So that's what I see. So it looks to me like he might be removing himself. His energy is not as bad as McConnell's. I don't think I can, I I, I don't, I don't want to go into McConnell's. I'm not doing it. Nobody can make me do it anyway. Okay, so that's what I see for DeJoy. Now, the post office, your question is, will the post office service eventually come back stronger? I do think it will because Biden wants it to. Biden believes in it. Biden wants it to. I will tell you guys, I've told you guys this before. It's got to change. It cannot. People are not mailing letters, people. It's got it's got to change. The post office has got to, it's got to get with the program, right? We're going into a different era. The post office needs to come with us. I think it will come with us. I think Biden wants to keep those jobs. He wants to keep the union. He somehow it has to be modernized. 
a whole bunch of things need to change. I do see this happening. I don't, I just don't see it disappearing. I don't see the post office going away. I don't see that. I do see it becoming a completely different entity, one that is very sleek, one that is very responsive, one that knows what its clientele wants and needs, and also one that's going to be, uh, what's the word, competitive. The post office is going to go through this change. It's going to come out looking like a sleek athlete, and it's going to focus on their clientele, whoever that is, and then they're going to compete. So, you know, the post office might select some industries and literally streamline themselves so they do a really good job of delivering this particular type of thing. So this is kind of what I see. It's really a complete re-engineering of the post office. DeJoy is not interested in that. His role, what I've always gotten from my guides, this is allegedly and for entertainment purposes only, was to destroy it, was to literally destroy it, right? Uh, And he's done a good job of that, right? So he's done his job. My work is done here. He's going to go off and make a lot of money somewhere. I hope it's out of the United States of America and good riddance with you. Don't let uh, Lady Liberty kick you in the butt on your way out. Okay, let's do one or two more crimes, crimes, one or two more. (laughs) One or two more questions. I just read the next question was from Yaya 1030. And of all the words in this multi-sentence question, I see the word crimes. (laughs) Hi, Susan. Will Jared be held accountable for his crimes relating to SA? Do you guys know what SA is? Let's just say it's a country. Okay. Besides the money, wasn't he the one to give out the names to MBS? Do you want to know who MBS is? He's a prince in SA. Why is Yaya 1030 using such cryptic words? Well, because SA is freaking crazy. That's why. And we don't really want to talk about them. Okay. MBS is the the, uh, prince there. And also the guides would also be talking about Khashoggi. If you remember the journalist Khashoggi disappeared or didn't disappear. Unfortunately, part of his body disappeared. Um, supposedly, allegedly, under the hands of MBS. Whew. Will Jared be held accountable for his crimes related to SA? <clears throat> you, Yaya might be talking about Khashoggi uh, in this crime. Also, uh, Jared, it, 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 this is public, this is publicly noted, shared with MBS a list that United States intelligence, now this is when Trump was in office, the United States intelligence compiled who they thought were enemies of MBS. Now imagine, right? Imagine, if you will, um, Biden's son-in-law going to North Korea or going to China and saying, hey, here's a list of your enemies just because I'm a nice guy. Just imagine that, right? And then imagine those enemies disappearing, right? <laughs> so uh, your question is, will Jared be held accountable for that? I, I don't think so. I think Jared, uh, that's an international crime, the guides are saying. That's what they're saying. Um, I think Jared will be held accountable for other things, allegedly having to do with money. And um, ugh, I didn't want to see that. Uh, inappropriate relations with people or young people, something like that might be related a little bit to um, Epstein in some weird way. Okay. Uh, So right now the legal Eagles think that Jared and Ivanka are, have turned on Trump and are, we know that Jared just just gave testimony too, and we think that they are they are state's witnesses. Okay, whatever you want to say. The guides told you that this was going to happen two years ago, right? I mean, the news gets around to it when they do. Um, 
Ivanka was not going to go down for her dad. No way, no how, no. And Jared uh, doesn't want to go down either. Um, but I do think that even though they are helping perhaps Smith with his investigation in some way, I don't think they're both going to get off scot-free. I don't think that. I feel that Jared is going to be held accountable for something. I get this sense and it makes me, I don't know how it makes me feel, but it's sort of like the feds are saying, yeah, work with us and we'll see what we can do, right? We'll see what we can do. Come on, have a seat, have a talk with us. We're good friends. And then after you, you know, Jared or Ivanka gives the feds all, all, just all, just literally just all this information, the feds are like, gosh, you know, that was real helpful. You know, would you like a Coke? Yeah, that was real helpful. By the way, we need to talk to you about all these other crimes that you did. Like heartless, heartless, like being all friendly. And then, you know, just about the time you think I'm going to make a deal, I'm going to get off. They're like, yeah, no, honey. No, you're not going to get off. We're, we're going we're gonna to have to just nail your butt to this wall right here. It's <laughs> brutal, brutal. I'm telling you, it's brutal. I'm like, wow, it's kind of scary, frankly. Um, so I, I think, I don't think he's going to do prison time forever. I don't think he's going to do a lot of time. I don't think she's going to do a lot of time, but I think they're going to do time. Okay. I have no idea how long I've been talking because there's no, nothing. There's no clocks here. I'm like living on in some crazy world. Um, if you're newly joining me and you're wondering why my background is different, it's because, well, I'm in the mountains right now, even though this does not belie mountains, this it's a very nice Airbnb I'm staying at. Okay. One more question would be, I have some great questions here. Maybe I'll do a part three, but right now I'm going to end it with this. Magnemonious one, Magnemonious one. Can you ask your guides about last year's battle with inflation? What is the cause of inflation we experienced last year? Some of the explanations I have heard about this don't add up to me. Well, the guides are telling me that uh, they always use this analogy of hot, of, of our economy being too hot, uh, running too fast, overheating, okay? Um, now, the reason that happened, the guides would say, is because of COVID um, and the PPP money, or the PPE or whatever it was, money. Many businesses, and I personally, unfortunately, know people who got free money. I also know people who got not free money, but a loan and are having to pay it back. And you know what the difference is between those two people? Their voting status, the R and the D, to be honest with you. But many companies got millions of dollars. Some people, some companies got hundreds of thousands. Some people got tens of thousands of dollars for free, for free. It was forgiven. Now, what happened was those companies are flush. They've got a lot of money. They raised all our prices because they said that their prices went up, which is true. But they didn't lower their prices when their prices went down, which is also true because they're still living off of all this money Free, free, free money. Imagine getting a million or two or three or 20 million free. Imagine. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to, you're not going to hire new people. You're not going to lower your prices and pass that along. You're going to spend, you're going to spend that money, right? You're going to buy, 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 buy. That's what created this hot economy. Also, People that had jobs that just went remote, they couldn't spend their money. They could not spend their money. There was nowhere to spend your money. So when we came out of that, they had money to spend and they went out and bought four wheelers, boats, whatever. They, they spent, they went on vacation. So the economy was full of cash. It was too hot. So that's how we got here. We got here because of those reasons. And until 
people stop spending money, the economy is going to continue to run hot. I mean, it sounds, that's why when the Fed says we need less employment, seriously, the Fed literally says we need higher unemployment. Crazy, right? We're going to bring the economy back down. How? On the backs of the workers. Not on the backs of the corporations. We're not going to add taxes to the corporations to keep them from spending so much. We're not going to require them to not price gouge us. No, we need our we need employment to come down. It's crazy. It's crazy. I know it's crazy, but this is the metric that they use. They also raise the interest rate. What does that do? Adversely affect the housing market. It it adversely affects loans. Okay, so the thinking here is corporations wouldn't spend money. They wouldn't expand because they can't get loans, right? They didn't need no loan. They had all your government free money. They were still expanding. That's why it didn't work. That's why when they raised the rates, it didn't work. All it did is take out our housing economy. The real estate cratered. But this is the only, these are the only levers they have to pull according to what we've always done. These are the levers the Fed pulls. Because of course, we're never going to go after corporations, right? But this is, was a unique situation. These corporations had flooded with cash, flooded with cash. And, and when the Feds raised the interest rates, it didn't affect the businesses. They, I don't need your money. I got my own money. Thanks, though. So the, the, it is coming down. The, the inflation is coming down really quickly right now. The guides always told you we would not be in a recession. They've always said this. We will not be in a recession. We are not in a recession. They've always said that we will have a soft landing. We are experiencing a soft landing. It's given all of the insanity that Biden has had to deal with, he has piloted this country through this insane period of time. He, he, is, he will be historic. And it's not just him, it's his cabinet, right? It's his cabinet, it's his people. And it's the Democrats. They have saved our butt. We could have crashed and burned big time. So that's the reason why we have the inflation, according to the Spirit Guides. And, um, and, and we're going to come out of this really well. And I do believe that we're going to raise taxes on corporations. I do believe we're going to do that. We might not get it as high as we need to, but we will raise taxes on corporations. And, and henceforth, the guides are saying the word henceforth, there's going to be a, um, maneuvering or a jockeying of the will of the people, the will of the corporations or the money or the power or the dark money, the will of the people, the power, the will of the people, the power. This is this is what's going to be playing out for the next five years is a jockeying back and forth. The people will win. The power will win. The people will win. The power will win. That's much better than what it was, which was the people are a doormat and the power just runs over them as they would as they wish now the people are saying no we have power we don't want this whatever it is we don't want this we're going to protest we're going to stand up for ourselves we're going to vote and this my folks is how we could end up with kamala being the law and order president because of this yin yang this power quotient back and forth with the people saying, you're not listening to us. We're going to get into the streets, right? So that is how we could end up there in a year or two. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Because the court is just like the TB, like Johnson and Johnson. No, we want, we want this money. It's just like the diabetic. Um, I'm going to put this on the screen. I think the last thing I saw when I left my town before I came on this working vocation, vacation, I had to back up. I couldn't believe what I saw. Outside of McDonald's, 
there's a sign, pay cash for diabetic test strips. And I thought, how ironic that they know that people that go to McDonald's probably have diabetes. What a sad state of affairs, number one. Number two, how sad that somebody is going to sell their diabetic test strips because they don't have the money. Or how sad that somebody's family member, grandchild, child, whoever, will steal those diabetic test strips from somebody that really needs them because maybe they have a drug habit and this is money. So instead of stealing TVs today, we steal diabetic test strips. It's a very sad commentary about where we are. It's a, but it also speaks to this problem of push-pull, moneyed interest, people interest, moneyed interest, people interest. The people have every right to very, very affordable health care. Diabetic test strips shouldn't even be a thing that somebody needs to buy. I mean, you would only assume that, that this is a black market item, that there are people who need money and people who people that need money to sell these and people that have money but need the strips. It's, it's very sad to me, but it, it illustrates where we're going. It's like a morality play, the guides are saying, right? Like Shakespeare. But, but these are our lessons. This is, what, this is where we're going. We will stand up. We will do the right thing. We will help those people that need those diabetic test strips. We will hold these Supreme Court justices to account. We will level the playing field more so that there's not two tiers of justice. We will get it closer. These are, this is our homework. These are our lessons. This is where we are right now. And the fact that we now have homework, that we have lessons, the fact that the people are no, are no longer the doormat, that they're rising up and saying, we're not a doormat. We want rights. We want affordable health care. We want these things gives me hope because until people are ready to stand up and say, we want this, we deserve this, and we're going to get it, you're never going to get it. So the fact that people are now standing up is really giving me hope. I really think that we're on the right path. How we get there, free will, but we are on the right path. Okay, everybody, take really, really good care of yourselves. I'll talk to you soon uh, about something. Who knows? For entertainment purposes only.